We start the meditation every evening with thoughts of goodwill. May I be happy. May all living beings be happy. Free from animosity, free from trouble, free from oppression. May each of us look after his or herself with ease. This quality of metta is very close to mitta, the word for friend. In other words, we're offering friendship, realizing that if our happiness depends on other people's suffering, it's not going to last. And either we're not going to feel good about it, or else we're going to go into denial about the fact that our happiness is causing suffering, neither of which is a healthy attitude. So we wish well to all beings. And we don't just stop with a wish. We want to actually embody these qualities in our actions. And because our actions come out of the mind, this is where we start. We start with the attitude and we start with the meditation as a way of showing goodwill to ourselves and goodwill to others, of being a friend to ourselves and being a friend to others. You can get the mind under control if you can keep your passion, aversion, and delusion, at least to some extent, within proper bounds. If you're not able yet to get rid of these things entirely, at least you can get some control over them. You're going to benefit. The people around you benefit as well. This is why meditation is a friendly activity, not in the sense of going around smiling at people. Because actually each of us is sitting here very quiet, not looking at anybody else, looking inside our own minds. Friendly in the sense of doing something that helps. Helps yourself, helps other people. This is one of the good aspects of the Dharma, is that in helping yourself through the Dharma, you're helping others as well. When you're a true friend to yourself, you can be a true friend to other people. The Buddha listed four qualities of an admirable friend, and they start inside and then they spread outside from the inner qualities. The first one is conviction, conviction that your actions really do make a difference and you really are responsible for them, and that you have to be very careful about what you do and say and think because it really can make a difference. If you don't have this kind of conviction, you conviction, you get very sloppy in your actions, and you find that you can harm others, you can harm yourself very easily. So the first friendly quality is conviction. It leads to heedfulness in how you act. And then your actions, of course, to be really skillful, have to go into two directions. One is to actively do things that are positively skillful, and the other is to avoid things that are not. And the positive skills, of course, have to do with generosity, the way you give to others. It can be material things, it can be giving your time, giving respect, sharing your knowledge, giving your forgiveness. All of these things count as generosity. And again, other people benefit, and you benefit too. And you look at what you can give. This is a good attitude to start with. A lot of us come to the meditation thinking about what we can get out of it. But you're not going to get anything until you give. Like right now, you're sitting here, you've got to give some time. You've got to give up all the other things you're thinking about or you could be thinking about right now. And you give yourself to the breath. Watch the breath coming in, watch the breath going out, and see what, what you can learn about the mind by staying right here. The first thing, of course, you're going to learn is that the mind doesn't want to stay. It wants to think about other things. So you have to remind yourself you've been thinking about other things for who knows how long. And you've gotten some benefit from it, but you've also got a lot of trouble. And the trouble comes from the fact that the mind's thoughts are out of control. So the mind needs 
a measure of control, and this is where you exercise it, by developing the mindfulness and discernment around the breathing. So you come back to the breath. Try to make the breath as interesting as possible. In other words, notice how the breath energy has an impact on how you experience your body right now. Think of the energy flowing down all the nerves, down the shoulders, down the arms, down your back, out through the legs, in front, down through the throat, the lungs, the heart, all the organs in the torso. Each time you breathe in, each time you breathe out, think of the breath sweeping in, sweeping out. And you begin to notice that different thoughts seem to be associated with different parts of the body. If there's a tension in your arm, you'll think one thing. If there's a tension in your leg, you're going to be thinking something else. And so one way to get on top of that, so you don't start wandering off in the thoughts, is just keep sweeping the breath energy through the body every time you breathe in, breathe out. Now we're practicing meditation like this, and you're giving yourself to the meditation. This is one very positive way of being a friend to yourself and, of course, to other people. At the moment you're not harming anybody, and you're setting a good example. Because when we think thoughts of goodwill, it's not simply in thinking that our metta or our goodwill is going to make other people happy. We're basically hoping that they will act on the causes of happiness. And how are you going to get them to do that unless you set a good example? I mean, you can tell them all kinds of good things about what would be good for them and what would make them happy, but if you don't set that same example, if you don't walk the talk, your words are not going to have any weight at all. So here you're setting a good example for the world. If everybody could meditate, this would be a very different world from what it is. So these are some of the ways in which meditation is a gift and a way of being an admirable friend to other people. In addition to generosity, there's virtue. Virtue means abstaining from things that are harmful. No killing, no stealing. That right there is very friendly. No illicit sex, no creating any problems around sex. No lying. No divisive speech. No harsh speech, no idle chatter. This doesn't mean you don't say anything critical at all, but you are very careful in your criticisms. Again, the criticism has to come from goodwill. Divisive speech and harsh speech, I'm using coarse language, that doesn't show goodwill at all. You show goodwill by the way you time your words. Who's around when you're talking? Take that into consideration. What kind of mood is the person in right now? Are they in the mood to receive your words or not? If they're not yet, well, what can you do to put them in that mood? In other words, if you want to give constructive criticism, you have to treat your criticism carefully. If it really is valuable criticism, criticism show that it has some value. That way other people will give value to your words as well. If you just scatter your criticism around like, like, it's, like it's sand or something, no one's going to take it seriously. They're just going to avoid it. When they see the sand blasters coming, they all run away. So you try to show care in your actions so that they're not harmful, and so that even when you do have to say critical things. You do it with an attitude of goodwill. You do it as a friend. And finally, the fourth quality of an admirable friend is discernment. You really do understand how the mind creates suffering, and you can see it in action so that you can avoid it. And this is the attitude in which you are really a genuine friend to yourself, because the mind wants happiness, and everything we do is for the sake of happiness, and yet we would always turn around and find that some of the things we've done have actually created happiness, but a lot of the things we've done have not created just the opposite.
Well, why was that? Because we had no discernment. We were ignorant of what we were doing, ignorant of the effects, ignorant of the motivation going on inside our minds. I mean, things we should be very clear about, we tend to be very muddled about, because we're paying attention to all kinds of other things. This is where we're not really a friend to ourselves. To be truly a friend to yourself, you have to look at your actions. Before you do something, ask yourself, what are the consequences going to be? You don't do something just because you feel like doing it. You do it because you think it's going to have a good impact. If you don't see that it's going to have a good impact, and no matter how much you want to do it, you learn how to say no. That's an aspect of discernment right there, learning how to say no to yourself when you have to and make it stick. Why you're doing something, watch the results that are actually happening. If you notice that even though you meant well, your actions are not having a good impact, well, stop. If you don't see anything harmful happening, you can continue with the action. When you're done, reflect on the long-term consequences. If the action actually did cause trouble, talk it over with somebody. Don't be too embarrassed. Point out to them, okay, I did this and these were the consequences. That way you learn from other people's wisdom. And the fool is someone who thinks that he can figure out everything on his own. And we've had who knows how many generations of people practicing the Dharma now. They're bound to be people who've learned how to avoid mistakes, how to avoid things that may seem okay, but are actually going to cause trouble down the line. And this way you take your happiness seriously. That's what discernment is all about. Realizing that as long as you have the power to act, you might as well use it well for genuine happiness and doing what you can to learn. And this way you cause less trouble for other people and you set a good example. You're a friend to them and a friend to yourself. So when we talk about, may all beings be happy, may they be free from animosity, free from trouble, it's not just an idle, idle wish. We actually try to make that part of our motivation and our acting, and we try to embody it in developing these three qualities of conviction, generosity, virtue, and discernment. This way we're a friend to all, ourselves and to others, an admirable friend. both not harming anybody and also setting a good example. So if you keep these principles in mind, you'll find that the world is a friendlier place. Because you've learned how to be a good friend to yourself.